You're listening to TC Talks on TMT. Hey, what's going on, guys? It is TC here, back with another episode of TC Talks. And we finally got it, good ladies and gentlemen. We finally found the nice, sweet spot for this uh, editing program that I'm using to get my awesome microphone, my beautiful GoPro all running on the same system together as one instead of independently. So hopefully this good luck continues. Hopefully these videos get it just as easy to make just like this. Just plug it all in and go and you guys will be getting your videos that much more often, that much faster. And when I'm in that much of a pinch, it's going to be so simple to just go ahead and do it now. If this decides to continue, because remember, my GoPro and my mic, well, it was my microphone actually, struggled to work with the app that I was using, and now uh, it's it's working just fine. So hopefully that continues. That good fortune, though, did not translate to the Chicago Bears games. As you all know, the Chicago Bears lost 7-12 to against the Washington Commanders in a Thursday night football game that looked even worse in the previous Thursday night. I am so glad Amazon Prime bought the right for Thursday night football for this kind of play. I hope they buy it next year for the exact same kind of schedule because if you guys aren't aware, if this is your first time coming around to TC Talks or if you haven't checked us out on the Winter Circle at sportstownchicago.com Wednesdays at 5 p.m., then you don't know that TC here absolutely hated the idea of Amazon Prime having an exclusive right to Thursday night football. I thought it was gibberish, thought it was BS, but okay, whatever. But these games they've gotten have been absolutely terrible. And the Chicago Bears game this past Thursday just sums it up perfectly. The Chicago Bears actually did a pretty good job of moving the ball, especially in the first half, more specifically the first quarter. The offense showed some life. There were some mistakes that were made. Justin Field got a ball batted up in the air and got picked off on a great drive, and that seemed to deflate the whole offense continuing from there. It was just so unfortunate to see a team that had so much potential after the end of Week 5 and those Minnesota Vikings almost clawing their way back to victory in that matchup, to have them go out and perform like this, only one sole touchdown for the scoring, completely unacceptable. And there is a bunch of blame to go around, but I want to remind you really quickly before we dive into who's to blame, to go right down there and hit those buttons down there. I don't know what they all do, so go ahead and just push them, see what they do. Go ahead and click on them if you're on a desktop like this old boy right here. But go ahead, figure out what those buttons do, and do me a favor. There, I know there's a comment section. Tell me what those buttons do down in the comment section below so I could have some fun with the buttons on YouTube as well. But let's go ahead and get into the blame as to why the Bears looked as bad as they did on Thursday Night Football. Now, out of the gate, I want to blame Justin Fields so bad because it would be so easy to be like, the play calling was good, the offense was doing a great job, but this one guy, the quarterback, is struggling too much. He simply has to get taken out of the game. But to his credit, Justin Fields actually played a phenomenal game using his legs, kind of using his arm not as much due to one of the guys who deserves, one of the groups, I should say, that deserves the blame. But he was able to get into position to get the Bears the win late in that game, and it was blown. He was doing okay. Above average for Justin Fields, decent slash okay slash, uh, you know, come on, hopefully he improves soon for a younger quarterback. But for Justin Fields, this was a great showing because it showed his poise. It shows his ability to adapt to what not only the defense is giving him, but what his offense is giving him as well. Numerous times the Chicago Bears dropped needed catches and it got the Bears off the field on third down. It cost the Bears the game with Darnell Mooney dropping that catch to end the game. It was absolutely abysmal. How he did not reel in that ball is beyond me. And that goes to the first group of guys who deserve some of the blame. And that is going to be the wide receivers of 
Thursday night. It was abysmal. What they were doing is beyond me. Darnell Mooney had a few drops, numerous drops throughout the group as well. And it's just, you can't have that with Justin Fields. The man has a difficult enough time just completing passes on his own. He doesn't need the wide receivers to drop one of the few good passes he's going to have in that game. And we saw that numerous times. Now, I get the weather conditions were not the best. It's not ideal weather to catch anything. But still, these are the best of the best, supposedly, who are playing in the NFL, who are being paid to catch those balls. Specifically, Darnell Mooney, he needed to reel in that freaking touchdown. He needed to. Unexcusable. Inexcusable. Whatever the proper grammar is, go ahead and let me know in the comment section below. He needs to be able to complete that pass. 100% needs to happen. That gives Chicago the go-ahead by a point. Hopefully, they just kick the extra point because there's no point in going for, for two. Honestly, I mean, sure, it ties you up if they kick a field goal, but Honestly, it would drive me up a wall if they kicked, if they didn't kick the ball and they went for two. But that didn't even come to be. It doesn't even matter. No concern required because the Bears were just so bad. And on that last drive, there was some terrible play calling. So now we're going to turn some of the blame, a guy that shares a good chunk of it, to Luke Getze. Luke Getze is coming from one of the most dynamic offenses in the league, the Green Bay Packers. And you see already Green Bay is looking really weak out there on offense. So you'd think something happened to the offensive power in Green Bay when Luke Getze left. But lo and behold, here he is in Chicago. And there's absolutely nothing going for the Bears this season. It looks absolutely awful. And the play calling starts it all off. Sure, in the beginning, there are a few design plays, but after that, there it is just open season. It's uh, do do we repeat what we were doing in the first uh, half? Is that what we do? Kind of like the first time you played Madden, you just keep doing the halfback dive because it keeps working, and it's it's basically what the Bears do. They're like, oh, this worked the first time. Let's try it again. All right, it stopped working. Should we should we try it again? I mean, it's failed twice in a row, but. There's no way they're going to assume we're going to do this a third time and fail. So let's go ahead and do it. And it's just the lack of creativity. It's the lack of pre-snap movement that really drives me up a wall with this Bears team. And especially later on, you saw in the beginning, there, there were designed plays to get the ball out early. So Justin Fields didn't have to worry about the pressure that was coming against him from that rush uh, from the commanders. But still, the Bears, as the rush got worse, as the sacks increased, they failed to be able to address this, and they stopped calling those early plays. They did not get the ball out early. They let Justin Fields hold onto it, and sure, he ran for a good chunk of yards, but he also sacrificed the passing ability, and that really came to bite Chicago in the butt because now the defense didn't even have to worry about the passing game because the few times they did try to pass – it was being incomplete because the receivers weren't catching the passes. Justin Fields was throwing up ducks. Not that I think he deserves a good chunk of the blame, but it just wasn't designed good. Nothing was building off of anything else. And it just seemed like the play calling is what made the players out of sync. It just wasn't a good showing. And I think it's disgraceful for the sixth week in a row now, Luke Getze has just done terrible calling plays up there in the offensive coordinator box. He needs to do better. It, it is abysmal. And, and another thing, really quickly, if you want to just fix these situations, if you want to fix some of the problems with the Bears offense, I think the first thing that you could do is just put both the backs in on every play. Let them just do a little bit. Throw them out there in the flat. Let them work with the ball because we know that Khalil Herbert – is able to, to juke all around and, and just, you know, Swiss Army knife his way to a first down. We know David Montgomery has the ability to just run right into somebody and be able to get five yards. It's just who he is. So if you just leave those two guys in the flat, give them a rest after they've actually caught a ball and ran a play, and, you know, just throw in the, the third back and let him be a part of the dynamic as well, that would be a lot better than just having this silly, ridiculous, uh, we have the worst receivers and we're just going to continuously try to throw to them routine because it's honestly 
terrible. You see these guys fail continuously. You see guys like Bayless Jones, who now has two dropped punts in this season and has nothing else to show for it. He has a touchdown that he got last week, and that's about it. Eight yards this week on the ground. And honestly, what are you supposed to do with that? That's the other thing really quickly. Stop with the wide receiver runs. They do not work. I understand you like them. They get eight yards. You got some fast guys. You want to be able to work in their dynamic play. But you could do that in other ways. You could do that through play calling, through scheming, through pre-snap movement. It doesn't have to be specifically in the run game on these wide receiver end arounds. It is stupid, and eventually teams are just going to be expecting it because you've been doing it numerous times. And to be fair, you know, you have other teams that do do the same thing, but you're talking about guys like Debo Samuel for the 49ers who are doing this, and nobody on the Chicago Bears has the same explosiveness or talent as Debo Samuel. So until Chicago gets someone like that, they need to stop with these runs because eventually they are going to get stopped. The receivers are going to get popped, and they're going to be down already in a terrible unit. So get those backs in, limit those receivers ability to get popped and honestly figure out to get Justin Fields the ball out of his hands ASAP. But another group of people that deserve the blame are the McCloskeys. It has been an absolute terrible showing for the McCloskeys over these past few seasons. And I think the biggest thing that transpired was Matt Nagy and Ryan Pace being able to go in and get Mitch Trubisky's replacement. They should not have allowed that. They should have made him go out with Mitch Trubisky one more year. They should have made him build up the team a little bit better. And then they should have fired Matt Nagy. They should have given the next coach the ability to go out and get his own quarterback and invest in his own system. Because honestly, I'm not saying this is the case. I'm saying it very well could be the case because of the way things look. It doesn't seem like Justin Fields is believed in in Chicago. He's not given the benefit of the doubt. He's not given the position to go out and win games. In this most recent game, he did get the opportunity. But overall, it doesn't seem like Justin Fields is supposed to be the guy going forward. That's just me personally. Maybe I'm wrong, but that's the vibe I get. And honestly, it's the Mikulski's fault because they let Matt Nagy and Ryan Pace go in there, pick who the next quarterback is. Now they bring in a new head coach and a whole new system, all the whole nine yards, to be with that new quarterback picked by the previous coach, which makes absolutely no sense. There are so many guys on this Bears team that you could just tell they want gone next season, and they have the ability to get rid of them. But on the other side of things, they don't have an established core to be able to build upon. And let's be honest, Justin Fields is not a guy you build around. Is he able to help out on offense? Is he perhaps a franchise quarterback? Sure, I will give you that. But at the same hand, Justin Fields, you don't want to build the offense around him because what even is he on offense? You want to have good backs like they do with Herbert and Montgomery, and you want to use Justin Fields in unison with those backs. They are able to be dynamic with with Justin Fields in the run game, in the pass game. And Justin Fields, he's dynamic in the pass game with his ability to get out of the pocket, his ability to run the ball as well. And on top of that, he does have a good arm. So once that gets into play, it could be really deadly. But if you want to talk about building things, you need to build that offensive line. The offensive line, not only is it going to increase the running game, it's going to help out in the passing game. So many times you see teams try to invest in a quarterback and it's like, sure, you could do that. When you get a generational talent and you build around that quarterback, it is possible. But you have situations like Andrew Luck where you don't invest in that offensive line and you don't see any progress. You see maybe playoff entries, but you don't get deep playoff runs because the offensive line should be what your offense is centered around. Bears, to their credit, they went out there and they tried to do something with this offensive line with the limited capabilities that they had. But still, this is a terrible unit. They need to do something in this upcoming draft, in this upcoming offseason, because it is just terrible. I will give the front office, I will give the Mikulskis a slight pass in the sense that when Ryan Poles and when Matt Eberflus came to Chicago, the, it was already late in the uh, free agent signing, so there wasn't a lot left on the table for the Bears. But this coming offseason, they need to make the right moves. They need to invest in that offensive line, 
first and foremost. I know everybody is saying that defense is terrible. They need this. They need that on defense. 100% I agree. But the Bears defense, they've been holding their own. Despite how bad they may be statistically, this, that, or the other thing, they haven't been too bad. It has been the Bears offense, specifically that offensive line, that has just consistently failed. If Justin Fields has more time to throw the ball, which he does have a decent amount of time, he just holds on to it too long. And the running game gets the help it needs through the offensive line. Like David Montgomery and Khalil Herbert literally go out there. They either dance around everybody if you're Herbert or they just pound through everybody to get their yards. Imagine if they had a four-yard gap and then that potential of Montgomery to just run for another five yards through people. That is nine yards instead of four to five yards that the Bears would be averaging. And it starts with that offensive line. A good offensive line will make a great running game. A good offensive line leads to a good passing game. And the Bears, that's what they need to target this next offseason. If the Mikulskis have any sense, they will start to think long-term because that is their biggest flaw. They don't think long-term. They are too short-sighted. That is why Justin Fields was picked last year at quarterback. That's why Matt Nagy was let go at the end of last year. That's why they got a new head coach with a second-year quarterback this current season. It is a bad showing for Chicago, but honestly, perhaps this is just first-year head coaching woes, or maybe it's something else. We'll see that coming up through the rest of the season, but give me your thoughts on the Chicago Bears down in the comment section below. Until next time, this has been TC with DC Talks. Peace. <laughs>